Hi guys, welcome back to Talking Wolves. We've got a brand new video on the channel for you today and we'll look at the last 10 seasons and each season we're going to pick out the worst signing Wolves made in that individual season. So going back 10 years, we're going to start off, this is the 13-14 season. This obviously the season Wolves got promoted back to the Championship, so it was a very good season the club overall. So it's quite difficult to pick um, a player for this one, but the player I went for was Leon Clark. And the reason why I've gone for Leon Clark, obviously the Wolves before um, this, this spell, this was the second spell at the club, the reason why I chose Leon Clark, mainly because of what he'd done already done in the season for Coventry. So he spent the first half of the season at Coventry and he scored 18 goals in 29 games. Um, he signed for Wolves in the January. He then made 30 appearances for Wolves, scoring one goal in the rest of that league one season. Um, now the reason why, the fee was about £750,000 for him. And the reason why I put this one of the worst signings that season, one because a lot of the signs were quite good that year, but also the fact that we could have signed Callum Wilson and was linked with Callum Wilson at the same time, strike partner at Coventry at the time, for an extra £250,000 more. And we decided to go with Leon Clark, who wanted the experience at the time. And obviously look how Callum Wilson's playing now, and now that's worked out for him. Um, he didn't really seem to fit the side play at the time either. Um, he seems to have never really got a run of games. He was unlucky in and out of the team. Um, he seemed slow and lethargic. His body language was always like that. His body language was like that years ago when he first started from all, so that isn't something that changed over the years. Um, so that is definitely why Leon Clark is the first one on the list, going back 10 years. Uh, it feels a long time ago now, but I really enjoyed that season. Um, and then we start to work our way through the rest of the seasons, and you start to see the rest of this video as we go through. You start to realize how bad some of these Wolves players were that we used to sign compared to what we are now and what we've done now, and that the players have been linked with. Some of these next few ones are really painful. It's painful to go back through some of this list, to be honest, and realize how far we've come. So the season after that was 14-15, uh, and it was in the Championship. It's when the game was under Kenny Jacket and we finished seventh place in this season, just missing out on the playoffs. The player I've gone for here was uh, Yannick Sagbo. Now Yannick Sagbo came on loan. He was brought in to give us a bit of a fo focal point, a bit of a target around the championship. Uh, he came in from Hull um, and he, he made four appearances for Wolves and scored him zero goals. He didn't fit the club at all, was moved on very quickly in that season. He moved back on sent back to Prince Hulbert straight away. Didn't work, very slow. Um, no sort of build up play, we couldn't play off him, he was so unfit, it, it was unbelievable. Uh, and then he was replaced by someone after, who I nearly put on this themselves. He was replaced by Danny Graham, who again he came on loan. Similar sort of amount of appearances, made five appearances, scored one goal. So in, that, in, this, champion, in this season, the championship, I really struggled to find um, out between the two, between Yannick Sagbo and Danny Graham. Both strikers couldn't seem to make the grade of Wolves, uh, even though they had done previously with the levels. Uh, and that was basically quite a poor, poor season for Wolves in terms of strikers. Um, again, because Leon Clark didn't work out the year before. So that's trying to find the players that worked, and neither of them worked really. Um, so that's why they're on this list. The next one is in the 15-16 season. Again, this is on a Kenny Jacket, a 14th place finish for the season. Another painful, painful run on this was, was Grant Holt came in on loan, um, and he made four appearances for Wolves. He made a, complaint, a combined playing times time of 81 minutes. He came on at Birmingham, I remember him, came on Birmingham away. Um, looked like a Sunday league player, was so, so unfit. Um, he was the shadow, shadow of the play he was. I remember him coming off the bench and then the shirt looks looked tight on him. He didn't look like a footballer. Um, it was it was a really, really poor sign that was. And then he went back uh, pretty quickly after that as well. So that was another one of Kenny Jackett's signs that didn't particularly work out. Another one that could be mentioned from the 14, sorry, from the 15-16 season was also Jeremy Halan. He came on loan for Wolves, only made a couple of appearances, then went back to for Wednesday and then retired pretty much quickly after that for um, religious reasons or for that love of the game. So he retired altogether quite a young age. So that was one of the reasons, another reason why Grant Holt made it onto the list um, in those seasons. A couple of back-to-back -back seasons there. What you'll find out on this list, what you'll notice if you go through them, quite a lot of the players have been trying to replace the one before. So it's, what's interesting is they never sort of the Wolves never really managed to be able to place the one they were trying to replace, and they're almost chasing themselves for quite a few seasons. The season after that, 16 17, this is Foson's first season um, at the club. Wolves finished 15th, and they won the Walters end to start with, and then Paul Lambert took over about halfway through. Now, the one I'm going to mention, the famous one for a lot of Wolves fans, is Paul Gladden. Now, Paul Gladden came in for £2 million pounds, uh, from the Dutch League, scored quite a few goals there. Uh, I'm going to make his debut against Burton Albion, so Burton Albion, he came on. Looked out of place straight away uh, in that division. He had no pace, lacked his sort of um, his mobility. His crosses come in, he could seem to get near anything, um, and then he seemed to drop. His, the fitness, he then really got up to speed. Then he seemed to drop out of favour. 
Um, and then they, and then by the time he seemed to get up to speed or, or, or seemed to be what was saying, moved on very quickly. And then Paul Lambert was never really going to play him after that. He was had sort of the championship players that he wanted to play. Um, so he's moved back to the Dutch league then. Uh, he's gone to have relative success in that league. He's still scoring goals now at the top level in, in Holland. Um, so he's going to have a fairly decent career, but for Wolves, he always makes the other makes the joke that he, 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 he tried more Wolves restaurants than actually appearances because he only made three appearances for Wolves and no goals. That was almost two million pounds wasted for Wolves, really. Uh, the next one is the 17-18 season. This is the season Nuno's first season. This is the season Wolves were champions uh, of the championship. Now again, this was a tough season because Wolves signed lots and lots of good players this season. And the one I went for was Phil Osafeu. Now he was a right back we brought in from the German second division. He was a free transfer, um, and he came in, and he was a full Ghanaian international at the time. We played the maybe one appearance for Ghana at the time, um, and he struggled to get fit. He never really got fit for Wolves. Assigned him. Um, and, it, and it never really worked out. He, he couldn't get up to speed. Obviously, Doherty was on the season anyway. Um, and they moved him after a year. Never played for Wolves. Came in, never saw him play, um, and has moved on. Again, that season was a tough one because there were so many good players Wolf, Nuno brought in and Wolves brought in. That had real big impacts that season. Again, another mention I could have gone for, Roger Miranda. Uh, he started quite strongly, but then again, he dropped out of favour pretty quickly in the league. Um, we couldn't really get, he couldn't get into the squad. Uh, and physicality he struggled with, concentration he struggled with. Uh, so I could have gone Roderick Miranda, but he actually played about 18 times for Wolves. So I went in full of failure because he never actually played for Wolves. And that was someone who never really uh, kicked on his career next. So the next one up is the 18 19 season. This is Wolves' first season back in the Premier League. They finished seventh in the league and they got to the FA Cup semi final. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult ones I had to do, was because uh, this transfer window is probably Wolves' strongest transfer window they've done for a long, long time. I don't really feel like they've matched this sort of le level ever since then in terms of consistency. I think every player they brought in had a good Wolves career, uh, pretty much. So I went with Leander Dendonka. This was his loan season, so before he signed as a permanent. Um, he's a 1.5 million loan fee, he came in for. He made 26 appearances and scored two goals. Now, the reason why I put him on this list is because of his start towards his Wolves career rather than obviously where he finished. So he arrived. He was overweight when he first started, he came when he first came to Wolves, he was spotted um, in KFC in Merry Hill um, before he even made an appearance for Wolves. Um, he, once he got better, so once he got fit about November, he came against Tottenham at home uh, and then once that he started his, his Wolves career completely changed then. Um, the, well, Nuno started playing three in the middle, so he's never as Nunes, sorry, never as Matinho um, and uh, Donkey midfield three and he's really strong, combative midfielder and, and he did okay, but again, some of the things his first season was probably one of his worst ones anyway, so um, once he did get up to speed and was fit, um, he had a shocking FA Cup semi-final, he didn't press the ball for De Feu's goal uh, when he went into the far corner. He then gave away a penalty right towards the end of the game, which then took it to extra time. So he had two key since that final, and he had, he had moments of doing that where he'd switch off and seem to forget to be a footballer, and he'd make crazy decisions. And that's one of the that was one of the reasons where where he showed it there in that semi final. Uh, but he did go on to have a solid Wolves career, particularly the season after when we got into Europe. He played 57 times and scored six goals. Um, so really, I thought he was a really good player, but in that transfer window, he's probably the worst one for that season of who he signed. Um, and then he's recently moved on to Villa, so he's still obviously a decent footballer. Um, and that was a really tough one to pick for that season. So the next one is 1920, and this is Wolves' second season in the Premier League, and they finished seventh place that season. And they had a quarter Europa League quarter final appearance as well. So the one I've gone for is Patrick Catrone. He was bought in this season for eighteen million pounds. Um, he's played twenty four times for Wolves, scoring three goals. Um, at AC Milan, he scored twenty seven goals in ninety appearances. And at twenty two years old, I thought this was going to be a great sign for Wolves. I thought he was a player who looked to want to test himself in another division. There was rumours before he signed that he didn't particularly want to leave AC Milan. That was his boyhood club. And there's lots of rumours that happened before he even came to the club, and he was whether he was sure he was going to sign or not. Um, and I feel like that might have not exactly put him on a on a, on a great foot, on a great start with the club. The fans took to him straight away. Yeah, I remember he had, a, he had a song before he even kicked the ball. He had a song about him, and for some reason, this is the player for a long time. What I've seen for a long time, the Wolves fans really wanted to work. They really wanted him to do really well. And it just didn't for some reason. There's lots of different reasons. I mean, start off, he was brought in that season to take pressure off Raul um, in the Europa League and basically back up as a Premier League player. He couldn't get a run of the team because how well Raul was playing. That was probably Raul's best season that season. He couldn't get a run of the team. The team weren't really playing to his strengths. He was trying to, when he was trying to be played on the shoulder um, and trying to get into the penalty area for little like, crosses and balls in first time finishes. 
Wolves didn't really play like that at the time. And he sort of struggled really because his chances were few and far between. He seemed to fall out pretty quickly with the club and the manager. Then was moved on to Florentino on loan for the rest of that season. So it was a lot of money at the time. Wolves never saw the money back after the 18 million pounds. He plays for Como now in the second division in Italy. So he's definitely dropped down a few levels. And it'd be interesting to see how his career plays out moving forward. But that is definitely Wolves' worst sign of that season. A special mention could also go to Jesus Vallejo. He came on loan from Real Madrid. Really poor against Chelsea at home for that member. But that was a lone player, so the reason I think Katrina, the reason why Catrone picked him for post was because we had to pay £18 million for Catrone and have Vallejo we didn't lose much really apart from the loan fee. Um, so that's why he was that one. The next one is 20, 2021 season. So the third season of the Premier League. Wolves finished third, this 13th this season, sorry, uh, and was Nuno's last season in charge. And they signed William Jose in January. Now the reason they obviously signed him was the Raul Jimenez injury. So they brought in William Jose. Uh, to try and get a few more goals in the Premier League and take the pressure off what was then Fabio Silva, um, 18 year old striker, which we brought in that season. Try and take the pressure off him a little bit. He played 18 times for Wolves in the January to the end of the season. Um, we signed him from Sociedad, where he had multiple seasons of scoring 15 plus goals a season. And actually signed him with the intention of being a permanent move, but his, his form uh, really struggled at the start and that obviously never materialised. Um, his run of starts then slowed pretty quickly as Fabio was being selected. Fabio Silva was being selected ahead of him, um, and I think really he was a casualty of the decline of, of Nuno. Really, he came in at a time where Nuno's Wolves team weren't at the best. We were struggling to create chances. We were playing really poor football at the time, um, and it just didn't work out for him. He, he, he had a couple of goals ruled out for the AR. Um, he scored one goal in his, in his time, and he's never seen look like scoring again. Again, he seemed very sluggish. Um, for the Premier League. He was then sent back to Spain. He's had a couple of good seasons at Real Betis now and he has been linked back this in the summer with, with the move to the Premier League for obviously different teams. So it will be interesting to see how that plays out for him. Um, but for that season, he was the worst that signed in that season. Uh, the next one. Next season was 21-22. This is Wolves' fourth season in the Premier League. He's been his 10th this season and this was under Bruno Large, his first season at Wolves. And I've gone with Trincao. Now Trincao came in on loan from Barcelona. Um, he struggled with consistency during his games. He lacked the physicality for the Premier League, I always thought. Um, but he had some really good performances. He, has, he had moments of brilliance. Um, he had moments where he lacked confidence as well. I thought he probably should have taken players on. He'd always cut inside when he got on the outside. He always knew he was going to cut inside onto his left foot. Um, he did lack a bit of confidence at times, but he was a young player at the time. He was only 22 years old. Um, and Wolves turned down the chance to sign him for £20 million at the end of that season. Um, I actually would have signed him, considering... Uh, how he planned out his replacement the season after. But I feel like Trincao has gone to have a good season, good season last season at Sporting Lisbon. He might have been worth a, a punt for 20 million and at his age, um, because he, in a different city, he might have worked a little bit better. But that's always the worst one for that season was for Chisco Trincao. And last season, this is such a big one for last season, you can probably guess what's coming. It's the 22 23 season, fifth season of Premier League, 13th place finish. Real large sack turned on into the season. And they brought in obviously Lopetegui after the World Cup break. And it goes to uh, Gonzalo Guedes. Now, £32 million you spent on Gonzalo Guedes. He played 18 times for Wolves, scoring two goals. We signed him from Valencia, which is a fee to come to £32 million, depending on um, add ons. Rumours on early on that he didn't want to come to the club to start with. Um, Mendes had a big say in that deal, and we don't know whether uh, he actually wanted to come in the first place. That was always a rumour when, when he actually joined. And I wonder why the, the involvement from Mendes is probably the reason why the club have now moved away potentially of having him such an involvement in big deals. Because um, again, like Trinko, Guedes struggled with the physicality of the Premier League, often with sloppy possession, physically uh, out strength. He showed his class in a great goal against uh, Brighton, um, where he's played in behind with a really good finish. Um, and he didn't do that enough for me, that was, the, that was a problem. He showed what he could do the once really. And he scored against Liverpool in the FA Cup as well, which is tapping. But, he showed he had some potential and he was a serious international player at the time. But if you don't want to be there, you don't want to be the club, he's definitely had a big impact on the performances. And I feel like, judging what's happened since then, he clearly didn't want to be at the club. He was lying to Benfica in the January, he was in January just gone. And the second half of the season there, and it looks like he's going to stay there for next season as well on loan. The question is now, how much of that massive transfer fee can Wolves actually get back? Um, they're probably not going to see all of that money back. Um, but we're just going to see in terms of what happens. 
probably 32 million pound is one likely to see all that back so um, we'll see so hopefully you liked that bit of video there look to the past 10 season some classic names in there you probably haven't heard for a long time uh, obviously for the right reasons as well because some are absolutely terrible shock us all and you remember and you realize in, in retrospect how far Wolves have actually come that 10, 10 seasons um, and it's really good to see how Wolves have actually progressed in some of the shockers what the interesting theme was that you might have noticed going through loads of those players were strikers now moving into the next season Wolves do need a striker I don't think we can afford to have another flop. We do need someone who's going to hit the ground running and is going to score 10 plus goals in the Premier League next season. Otherwise, I think we are going to be in serious trouble because we have been lacking, lacking goals at Wolves for a couple of seasons now. And I think that is something we've nearly got to focus on. So if you enjoyed that video, please subscribe to Talking Wolves. Get in the comments below with there any players that I missed that you should have put in, that I think I should have put in there. Um, and please keep an eye on the channel as we've got loads and loads of transfer videos coming up and loads of things to do with pre-season. So thanks for watching that video and I'll catch you in the next one.